In this episode of Cars Plus, we're going to do a review of the Mazda CX-30. Now you might be wondering why we're going to do a review on this new 2021 automobile. My Pontiac Solstice was backed into by another driver who didn't bother to stick around and left a beautiful hitch mount imprint in the front of the car. So I don't have it for 30 days. That's why we're going to review the Mazda CX-30. Let's start by talking about the styling of the Mazda CX-30. One of the things I particularly like is that the headlight is shielded. As we all know on modern vehicles right now, after a few years, the headlight turns yellow, dingy, horrible looking. At least part of your headlight is covered here. Probably a good idea. Too bad we don't have it all covered, but pretty nice anyway. As we come back and look along the side of the car, we see that it has a fair amount of contouring. It doesn't have sharp lines but it doesn't look like a jelly bean either. It has a nice sweeping contour through the side here, a rather unique looking rear view mirror, particularly when we're facing from the driver's seat and looking at it, a nice slope back going over the front of the car through the top, looks very sharp. The wheels seem to go very well with this particular design. And I really like the utilization of the plastic down on the bottom of the car to take up road chips and road rash. The front and rear wheel arches, as the stylus has done them on this vehicle, seem to give it a sort of powerful look. Adds to the drama in the design a little bit. So it doesn't just look like a boring standard crossover. And when you look at the back of the car, particularly like the tail lights, a very nice design. They put the third brake light so high on this, so you have a very safe design back here. Often third brake lights, like on the Solstice that I have, may not really add that much for safety, but this one definitely will. To open your gas cap, you have to press on it and it pops open. And you press it back shut. Very simple. When we look at the back, you also have a windshield wiper back here and a nice upper curve that seems to blend beautifully with the body. And again, you have your plastic bumper coming around and the black going all the way around the car works particularly well. I could see in certain colors it wouldn't, but black and silver is beautiful. I wouldn't want to see it as black and white, personal preference. Let's take a look at the interior of the car. We'll start here in the rear and see what we have as we have a split seat system. We can fold down the larger portion on the driver's side, smaller portion on the passenger side, or neither, or both. Your spare under the cargo floor here. You have your jack and your other tools that you need for switching out a tire, should that ever happen. Nice large door into your rear seat passenger area and you are set up for child car seats and you have them on both sides you can have one or two child car seats in the rear in the center rear the rear passengers get their own vents for heating and cooling however there are no controls back here for the rear passengers to control the temperature looking at the door panel here in the passenger area in the rear you have your switch for your power window and below that, you have a cubby. As we swing inside here, you can see the center armrest, which you can fold down. It has complete cup holders for your rear seat passengers. And each of the two rear seats has a headrest that can be adjusted. Now we'll look at the driver's compartment and the driver's position. 
and what all is available to both the driver and the front seat passenger. On the driver's door, you have a lock and unlock button right in front of the door handle. And below that, you have your mirror controls where you can control both mirrors from the driver's side, up, down, right, left. And then you have all four of your windows that you can control from the driver's side. And you also have a window lock button at the bottom there that you can utilize. The bottom of the seat in the front, you have a bar that allows you to do fore aft, pull up on it, you can slide it wherever you want the seat. This particular knob is lumbar support. You can rotate it either way, change the lumbar support for yourself. This lever allows the seat to go up and down. This lever back here changes the rake of the back of your seat, so you can lay it down or set it up. This is your headlight stalk over on this side. You have multiple positions that you can use from fog lights, driving lights, to auto, to off. And utilizing the car in auto, it'll even take care of your bright lights at night. When we come to this portion of our steering wheel, the car is, of course, equipped with Bluetooth. You can Bluetooth your phone to it, and you can answer your phone right here on your steering wheel. You have plus or minus volume. Now, the thing to remember about these two switches on both sides of the steering wheel they're toggles up or down and press to operate also. So you can't just say, oh, gee, I just press here. No, they toggles. So these four switches on the steering wheel will all toggle and you press to select. Right here, we have our info button. The info button will show you three different displays that you can get when the car is turned on utilizing the info button. So there are three different displays that you can actually see. Here, your steering wheel center. Activate your horn, super easy. On this side of the steering wheel, you happen to have your cruise button, which is this button down here on the bottom. And you press that in, that will activate cruise. Your set plus is a toggle up, set minus, toggle down. And if you've stepped on the brakes and you're going to restart your cruise, that's when you press down. Right here, we have a lane warning system that the car keeps track of the whether you're keeping it in the lane that's utilized with this particular control and when you get outside of the lane this car has what i would refer to if it were an airplane a stick shaker you'll feel a vibration in your steering column but it's not going to vibrate side to side but you'll feel it and it'll tell you that you're coming over to for example the white line when you're not supposed to the only time that won't happen is if we use our turn signal which is also on the light stock and if we're using the turn signal to turn, for example, from the left lane to the right lane or the right lane to the left lane, the end result is, is it will not shake because you'll have given it the information that you're going to turn. So it's not going to get upset that you go over a white line. When we come to the center portion of our vehicle, we have our automatic shift here and our little notations of park, reverse, neutral, and drive. And you have a little push button so that you can move it when it's turned on and you can pull it into any of those positions. You have a sport button here that you can toggle forward or toggle off backward. We have our parking brake here, which you pull up to set, push down to get rid of. The remainder of the controls deal with your radio and navigation up here. And to be honest, they're somewhat difficult to use. We'll show you when we turn it on, how you turn on the radio so that you'll understand that. And we're going to show you the various things here on the instrument panel as they operate. On the far side over here, we have a glove box. Not very big considering the size of the car. In fact, I'd call it small as glove boxes go. But you do have one. You have a series of manual vents, two for the driver, two on the passenger side, that you can adjust where you want the airflow to be. Up above, you have your light controls for your interior, and you have a mirror set up where you can flip it so you can get rid of light from a vehicle behind you. On the very top here, both sides, 
you have your sun visor, you have a nice little vanity mirror, and you have another piece that pulls out here. Both of them have the little pull-out piece on them. If we look on the driver's side here and bring it down, it also has a vanity mirror. So both of the sun visors have the same features, which is rather nice. They can also be flipped to the side. At each of the four seating positions, you have a grab handle up here on the top ceiling of the car that you can grab onto, make it easier to get in and out. On the right-hand stock on your steering column, you have all your controls for your windshield wipers, both front and rear, mist, auto, low, high, intermittent, etc. Everything you're used to on a modern vehicle for windshield wipers, etc. Car uses a proximity key system. As we said, it's an enterprise vehicle. They got both keys joined together. They can be anywhere in the car, including in your pocket. Step on the brake, press the button, start the engine. First thing you're gonna get is a chime if you don't have your seat belt on. When we come across and look at the climate control system, this particular system offers you two separate sides. Now right now you'll notice we've got an orange light that means we're synced up. If I press that in and stop the sync, notice it can be 76 degrees for example on the passenger side and 72 on the driver's side or any temperature you want to set. Right here we have our fan control plus minus, real easy, in order to control where the air is coming from. There is nothing on the button here. You don't see anything at all on that button but you can feel the button and you can change your positions right there including your defrost over here is your recirculate button again there's nothing on the button it's just kind of an odd thing that's on recirculate that's outside air back on recirculate we also have our front defroster control our rear defroster control and our hazard light located here in the center center console operates by pulling on a lever, you can slide it back, and you can flip it up if you want to. Now that slide back position, you can just leave it like that. But you can also flip it up. Inside, you have a USB port in the center front, and on this side, you have your old-fashioned cigarette lighter style port. Plenty of storage space in the center console. Down here in the center of your car, you have the radio on-off button here. It's actually the screen on-off, of course, also. You have to press down and hold it. I kept pressing it thinking that, well, pressing is going to turn on. No, it's a press down and hold in order to utilize it. Volume controlled right here. The channel is going to sound bad because it's a channel from Phoenix and we're down in the rocks in Prescott, Arizona. It's quite far away, but it's really a quite good radio. So that is your volume control. This particular device right here in the center does all your changes up on your screen. You press down and you get a menu, which gives you your source list, favorites, station list, tuner controls, manual tuning, AM settings, audio settings. That's all done by rotating that particular large control I pressed. So that is your menu for that. We've got other menus though because we can press the little menu button over here now we've got our communication we've got navigation settings entertainment information and the navigation will show you how that operates in a shot so you get kind of an idea of what it looks like to have the navigation running this button in the center too you can push it to the side in various directions and it causes other things to happen so it's very odd Press down, rotate, moves things in between, but you can also press to change other things with it. A couple of the things we have here. We have a trip button on the left, and we have controls over here for it on the right. Those can be utilized if you want to have trip information as far as distances, like we used to do with old-style speedometers. Now the vehicle is equipped with adaptive cruise. Even though I showed you where the cruise controls were, one of the things this car has is, as I said, adaptive cruise, meaning if a car jumps in front of you or you get too close to a car in front of you, the cruise will react itself and will slow the vehicle down. 
though you can also go up or down one mile per hour by using the toggle and go up one mile per hour or one mile per down each time you toggle, which is really nice. All in all, the car is extremely easy to drive. Having gone through what this vehicle is really like, what I think about the styling, what the various features are, one might ask, would I buy the car? Well, if I was in the market for a small crossover, this is probably a car I would consider if that was the type of car I would like to drive. But those of you who've watched the channel might know I prefer sports cars and older cars, cars you actually have to shift. So from that standpoint, since it's an automatic, it's not my sort of vehicle. But for other people, it probably will be their sort of vehicle. It seems to have great fit and finish, seems to have an appropriate interior for the price point of the vehicle, has very nice features and works very well. I think most people would be very happy if they purchased this vehicle.